Hey YouTube, this is Jaden, and this is going to be a discussion video. And what I'm going to be talking about today is I'm going to be making a reference to the new episode of Vanguard that came out. I watch it on YouTube um, under the channel Vanguard New Releases. Um, so if you don't know that, you can watch pretty much all of Season 3 up to the point that it has been released um, in Japanese, but it does have English subtitles if you're interested um, the channel is Card Fight Vanguard New Releases. <clears throat> so, you're, um, but anyway, I'm not going to be making any references to the storyline. So if you haven't seen any of Season 3, do not shut the video off. I'm not going to give you any spoilers. Um, so, <clears throat> what I want to talk about is there is a card played um, in one of the games, in one of the Vanguard battles, card fights, whatever you want to call them, um, in the last episode that I wanted to talk about, and there's a card, I'm not gonna say for what clan, I'm not gonna say anything about it, except that it is a new breed of what I'm guessing is going to be a new version of a perfect guard. Now, <clears throat> what this card did, um, was when the person who was attacking the person who used this new breed of perfect guard, um, they saw that their opponent only had one card in hand. Well, you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute, Jaden, if you only have one card in hand and it's a perfect guard, you can't use it because in order to use a perfect guard, you have to discard a card of the same clan. Well, that's what we all thought until this episode because what the, what the, uh, the person who uses this new breed of perfect guard does, I'm really doing my best to not say he or she, but what this person does is they reveal a normal perfect guard is what it would look like to us, and uses it. And the other player goes, but you don't have any cards to discard. You can't use it. And they said, well, this card's effect allows me to guard with the top five cards of my deck. And then you see these other five cards pop up on the screen to guard. And I was like, wait a second. So this is a new breed of perfect guard, I'm guessing. And instead of ditching a card, you can send the top five cards of your deck into the Guardian Circle to guard the attack. Huh? Now, this is the first time I've ever seen a card from any clan act like that. So I'm thinking, okay, is this card going to be just exclusive to this clan? Is it going to be exclusive only to this clan as in the clan that this player is using? Or are we going to see more perfect guards in the future to look like this? Now, the deck that this person is playing that uses this perfect guard, it's a, it's a deck that, as of Season 3, died down a lot because a lot of other support for a lot of other clans came out and they were just better options. I'm not saying this clan is not, at, not good, it's just nowhere near the other clans that I would say are your top clans because of the stuff that have come out at the start of Season 3, the cards that you see. So, and then I started debating with some friends, actually, over t um, a group text. And we were, we were all, because I sent out a group text, oh my god, guys, did you see the new episode of Vanguard? Have you seen this new Perfect Guard? What is the deal? And we all were like, we don't know, it is so OP. And, you know, um, my, I was talking with uh, fellow teammate Shadow Strike members Darian, Ryan, and um, Christian, and we were all talking, and we were like, okay, so what's the deal? Is it going to be a perfect guard that is exclusive to this clan and this archetype? Because this archetype really doesn't <clears throat> um, really get a lot of love because other clans out there – Excuse me, guys, because there are other archetypes and other clans that are just getting more and more support because they're just liked more. And they're just giving this card, this this clan, this specific kind of perfect guard to maybe help them stand up to the other clans. So that popped in my head. And then, you know, someone in the group text will said, well, maybe it's going to be a card you can't play four of. Because, as you know, you may only play four copies of a perfect guard in your deck. Or any card. And he's thinking, and, and uh, teammate, my friend Ryan said, what if it's a type of perfect guard that you can only play 
maybe one to two of. He didn't give a specific number, but then I understood what he meant. He said, what if it's a card you can't play four of? Well, that's a good idea. What if it's a perfect guard that you can only play one to two of, and then you have to play one to two copies of the perfect guards that we've all seen now, which is where you have to discard a card of the same clan to activate the perfect guard that's guarding the attack that you want it to guard. So that to me, that makes a lot of sense. So it's like you're getting a new perfect guard, but instead of having to pay the cost from your hand, you have to mill the top five cards of your deck. Well, this has pros and cons. The pros is you don't have to waste card advantage in order to use your perfect guards. You can just hold more of your hand because when you're using perfect guards for defense, when your opponent starts their turn in late game, you really need to start calculating what cards that you want to hold on to and what cards you can use for shield. Well, with this card, it would with this type of perfect guard, it would make it a little bit simpler because you you don't know what you're giving up. But at the same time, that's also a con. You don't know what you're going to be milling off the top of your deck. You might mill five triggers. You might mill a couple of triggers and a couple key cards that you wanted. Like if you're playing a ride chain deck or you're looking for that go-to final monster or that go-to rear guard that you're missing to complete your formation. You know, so there's pros and cons to this. The pros mainly being, like I said, you you get to hold your hand. You won't have to waste hand advantage just to use perfect guards because when you do play a perfect guard, it's a minus two to your hand. But the downside is, but the positive is that it completely guards the attack. However, with this perfect guard, you don't have to waste your hand. You just lose five cards from your deck, which could be anything from a trigger to a grade one to a three. You, you're just going to lose cards. So, you know, this is weird. It was on, it was Card Fight Vanguard episode 146, if you want to go watch the episode. Um, if you've seen the episode, you know what I'm talking about. So if you happen to write a comment in the set, in comment below, um, do not mention the person who used it the person they were playing, the clan that it was played for, and the, and the archetype for that it was played as. Because this card was a, another perfect guard of a clan that already has, a per, has two different perfect guards, and it, I mean, it, it, it is a perfect guard of a clan that already has one perfect, has a perfect guard, and then this perfect guard is just complete, it, it, I, I don't know how to explain it without going into further details, so I'm not going to try to explain it any further. But it, it, it's clear that, you know, they're trying to come up with a new idea for perfect guards. And it and to me, if as long as, you know, I me personally, because we were talking about this, and everyone was giving their, their two cents, whether they liked it, whether they didn't like it, whether they hated it, you know, blah, 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 depending on a lot of different um, reasons. If this card is only specific to this clan, then yeah, I have a problem with it. Because there shouldn't be one type of card that is just targeted to that clan or that archetype in that clan. You know, a lot of people at first, they were like, well, I don't like Link Joker. It's the only clan that locks. Well, you can't say that anymore because now there's cards for every clan that can lock a card almost. So... I would have a problem with this specific type of perfect guard because when you're building a deck, think about what you normally go for. You're normally going to get four copies of your ultimate boss monster, and then you're going to get f four copies of either your break ride, or you're going to get two copies of a good rear guard grade three, and then maybe two copies of another rear guard grade three, or just another alternate boss monster or something to set up a play, and then you count your perfect guards, and then you get your triggers, and then you fill in the blank spots. I mean, because I know me personally, when I decide, okay, Jaden, I'm going to build this deck. Like, for me, when set 12 comes around, I'm going to build Revengers. Well, I know for the Revenger deck, I'm going to need four Blaster Darks, and I'm going to need four Break Rides. Well, the Trial deck comes out before set 12 does, so I'm going to have to get four of them for the Trial decks, so I'll have my four Blaster Darks and four Break Rides, and I'll have some of my triggers ready, so then I can <clears throat> get a starting build of Shadow Paladins going together with current Shadow Paladin cards, and then fill in the spaces as I go. That's how I build a deck. So <clears throat> the way I'm looking at this is also this new breed of Perfect Guard, if it is just exclusive to this clan, I do have a problem with that. Now, if it turns out that if it's only exclusive to this clan 
and you can only play maybe one or two of them, I'll be more for it if other clans start getting things that are just as good. You know, you know if you understand what I'm saying there. I also wouldn't have a problem with it if um, other clans got to use it. Um, I would all, I'll, I'll, I'd be in complete favor of this perfect guard if maybe you can only run two of it and then maybe two copies of another perfect guard because then you could, you you could strategize a little bit. Do I want to run two copies of the special perfect guard or just do I want to just go ahead and run four copies of the normal? Or you know it might depend on what deck you're playing. So anything that can force more thinking on its players, unlike Yu-Gi-Oh and Konami does, where their main skill is just to make it as dumbfounded and an easy and re you know as possible and you don't have to use your head because konami doesn't want its players to use their heads that would be hard so that i wouldn't be a problem with so i just wanted to make a video discussing this so in the comment section below give me your thoughts without giving any spoilers to anyone that participates in the card fight or that episode of where this card shows up in the comment section below tell me what your opinion is would you be all in favor for a new breed of perfect guard that instead of taking a card out of your hand you just mill top the top five cards of your deck into the guardian circle and then they go to the drop zone do you like that would you be okay if it was just exclusive to this specific clan or would you be um upset with it um you know so feel free to give me your um all your input on this, I would, I think this would be something really cool to talk about because we all play perfect guards, you know. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, thumbs up this video for me. Please share your thoughts in the comment section down below um, with me, and I will see you later.